This video is about selecting the right conveyor dryer for you. Of course you're interested in the purchase price and part of that purchase price is the cost of shipping. You can reduce the cost of shipping by removing the legs, the infeed section and the outfeed section to compact the size of the dryer to get it in a smaller crate and that will save money because if the crate is too large the freight company might double or quadruple the cost of shipping. So we want to have the minimal shipping cost and to achieve that we're going to compact the crate in order to uh, have the lowest cost as part of our purchase price. This conveyor is typical of what most startup shops buy. It's got one heater. This heater happens to be in a hood 30 inches by 30 inches. The infeed section here happens to be 24 inches, but you can buy them smaller or longer. It has speed control, which is critical. And of course it has temperature control, which is critical. And then to adjust that belt to make sure it goes straight, there are adjustments on both of these rails at the end so you can make it track straight. Now in addition, a, a premium dryer will have four point tracking which means you can adjust that roller as well as the take up roller. You'll notice in this particular dryer there are no legs because this customer wants to save some money so by not getting legs and putting the dryer on a sole horse or table they save themselves some money. It still has adjustable feet to level it. Every dryer that is sold should come with a owner's manual like this one has and uh, that's important because it'll give you suggestions how to save money with your dryer. You'll notice that the belt is kind of brown or tan color that means it's a fiberglass Teflon coated belt those are the best belts they don't fray they don't stretch. If you see a belt that's black it means it's nylon and nylon stretches with heat and then what's going to happen is it's going to wander, it's going to fray, you're going to be spending money on a new belt. So that's a nice, nice belt. So this is an entry level for somebody starting out. When their business grows, they can open up the splice joint at either this end or this end of the hood and certain another hood section, double their productivity. To cure a shirt typically requires a minute. However, your experience can vary. For example, if you're printing a very lightweight material like a 50-50 or a white cotton tee with, say, a process ink, maybe the ink is fully cured in 20, 30 seconds. On the other hand, if you're printing, say, a sweatshirt or a tote bag or some heavy material, and say with 3D ink that's 400 microns thick, the curing time might be two minutes or two and a half minutes. So the actual time to pass our tests might be from 30 seconds to say two and a half minutes, but typically we're going to work with one minute. How do you know if ink is cured? Well, it's easy. Stretch the image 100%. That is double the size. If the ink does not crack, it's cured. Try to pick the ink off with your fingernail. If the ink picks off, it's not cured. We want the ink fully cured so it does not wash out later in the laundry or crack or flake or otherwise degrade. So after the shirts have cooled off, we want to apply those two tests. If the ink passes those tests, then it's fully cured. So we're going to assume 12 inches one minute. So that means if I have a garment in here that's 12 inches by 12 inches and the hood is 24 inches that's we said two garments per minute 60 minutes and an hour that's a, theoretically 120 garments and we're using that as a standard so if we increase the length of the hood from 24 inches to 30 inches that means 150 garments if it's 48 inches then theoretically We've got four per minute, 60 minutes, 240. If we have heaters on this side and heaters on the other side, so that we have two lanes, then we're doubling those numbers. You can buy conveyors with belts that are 18 inches wide, 20 inches, 24 inches, 30, 36, 48, 60, whatever. 
Well, the images say 12 by 12 at most, in most circumstances. So if we had a heater that was 16 or 18 inches wide, that would be sufficient to cover a 12 inch image. Therefore, if you have a heater that's 36 inches long and you're only curing 12 inches, you're wasting a lot of heat. Your dryer is inefficient, that's costing you money. So you want to look at the size of the heater versus the size of your work to see how efficiently you're using that heater. Okay, so for example, a 24 inch wide hood and you have a 12 inch wide image would be more than sufficient. If you go to 36 inches, then you may want to have two lanes each 18 inches. If you go 48 inches wide on the belt, then that's two heaters. 60 inch wide would be three lanes of heaters. So those are some of the options you can consider to try to get the most efficient arrangement and size of heater for you. And that will affect your operating costs of owning one of these dryers. The digital readout is nice in that it tells you whether or not the heat under this hood